Hello, my name is Matt and I occasionally give some art tutorials when people ask for them in the comments. And I've got another art quest today and that is from Robert who said he'd love to see a detailed video on how I use the burn tool and the other tools I'm using. So I thought I'd go through that and uh, get that underway. Now I might even change the title of this to a quest type title like how to defeat your big bad boss brain and create great art because basically this technique for me is to just get started and that's the hardest part of doing art doing anything really is starting it so i fool my brain by uh just saying oh, i'm not going to do much i'm just going to block out a basic scene or start to block out the character and my brain's like okay that's cool because we've got a full day ahead of us matt you got to mow lawns you got to do dishes my girlfriend will be laughing at that because i don't really do the dishes and yeah but before you know it because you got started you're drawing all day and those lawns are growing longer which is good bees flowers all that sort of stuff okay so let's get started this picture here that you can see whoops, is one I've been working on and I basically started it out using that technique. So I thought I'd just have this as my starting picture, but I'll go through the five tools I use to get a picture started the easy way without worrying too much about a really strong sketch, which is another good method, but sometimes you just got to get in there and do it so let's uh let's go through my method and my tools first the most important part is to create a blob now a famous chinese philosopher once said if he can express himself totally with but a single dot because he was like a calligrapher if he could express himself with a single dot, then he's achieved true mastery. So let's see if that works for us. Pretty much. Okay, so the tools I'm going to be using, and I apologize if there's artifacts showing up in this tutorial. It doesn't show up on my screen, but when my videos come up, sometimes there's artifacts of the pen. So try ignore those. So the tools I use are the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the smudge tool. Smudge tool is amazing, and I'll show you why soon. And then I also use the liquify and warp tools to play with the shape. Now, the philosophy behind it is I've just got something on paper that I can now play with. I've got an idea in my head, but it's still not quite there. I like to use the dodge and burn tools mainly for the reason is that I can work directly on one layer and don't have to worry about setting up layers with multiply and masking stuff and and it just gives me this is a technique that's basically just evolved into the simplest way for me to do things over time so use the soft round burn tool if I want to start to create roundness and depth and then you can use the dodge tool of course soft round again to hit the highlights and what have i got low opacity on the dodge tool because it's pretty severe so i usually operate about 10 to 15 percent and you can just build up on it top it for a highlight um and then what I will do is say if I want to turn this into something. Got no idea. I've just jumped in, but I've started drawing, and that's the main thing. Now, I've got a pretty amazing brush here for the smudge tool. It's my girlfriend's brush, so I can't really just go giving it away. I'm telling her to create an art pack for it. But what I recommend is just going through all the brushes you can find in the world, looking for good smudge brushes, and you'll find, you'll find your brush. I like to use this one. I have it at 100% strength because 
I want it to cut into things and I want to be able to move things. Um, you might have to, if you have a different brush, you might have to play with it slightly. Um, this one just works really well at 100% strength. And this is how I basically make my shape. And I prefer it to use it than using an eraser and then having to draw because with the smudge tool, I can um, get rid of and cut into a shape, but I can also pull out the shape, which is awesome. Otherwise, I have to be switching to eraser to cut out that shape. And um, I can do that. But I can't pull out the shape as well. So again, this is simplified and I can blend in the shading and stuff and give it a bit of texture, which is something I love, especially working in grayscale. You don't want it looking too smooth. You want texture in there. Okay, so that's almost the dodge burn and smudge tool in a nutshell. And then the other ones I like is the liquify. And again, you can use that to get the shape how you want it. If you watch my videos, you'll see my initial blob changes completely by the end of the video. I've liquefied a lot. And the other one I use is the transform warp tool just to do a quick play. And sometimes this is better because the liquify tool just focuses on the object and you can't see the backgrounds and how it's interacting with the background. So with the warp tool, you totally can and see how it fits in. So yeah, if you go to liquify, you'll see I lose all the background. Well, and um, I'm only dealing with that shape. Okay, let's. Uh, just do a few little things just to so you can see me working with it. I will use the burn tool. Here to do line work, so maybe we'll you'll use this to create an eye. This can be like a, a face. You can tell I'm doing this on the spot. No preparation. Okay. And then, um, and you can see I'm not too worried about my line work because that's where I come back in with the smudge tool. And I might go hard round here and I can use the smudge tool to define my line work. And uh, Robert, I was thinking this might help you quite a bit because you said you have to use your mouse a lot you can't use your pen for artwork so i understand with a mouse you you're stuck with um the same width lines basically so say if i draw a line here like that but you can use the smudge tool afterwards to define that line length and uh cut away and get a bit of texture in it and stuff like that okay so we then I'll go in and start to move my own line work around. So I'm not tied to the initial sketch. And again, this is a great way just to get started and play and see what works. And cut into your lines. If lines feel too thick, if you don't want lines, you can just get rid of them that way. Maybe start to think about highlights for the eyes and stuff highlights for areas you want raised um, say so if I want to show off that nose I just cut away at it with the, the smudge tool and uh, yeah we can and the beauty of the smudge tool is this is using the hard round. But say if I use my special girlfriend's secret brush, then you can start to really get some nice sort of hair-like results, textures. You can start to blend things in a bit more. It's 
stuff like that. Play with the nose. And I'm like, oh no, it's all rough around the edges, but I can just grab my sponge and see I'm still just working in the same layer. I'm not having to switch between layers. So it's a good speed thing. And at this stage, all you're doing is playing with shapes. And my brain's already into it now. It's like, man, we've got to get this right, Mac. Now that we started it, let's finish it. And that's the hardest thing with anything, folks. The secret to starting something is to start it. No matter what. Like even say my YouTube videos at the moment, I could have got really hung up on that I need to work on my audio voice and I need to come up with a great format and layouts and stuff. But I thought, no, I'm just going to start it and build on it and iterate and iterate. So that's my advice. To get past your brain getting overwhelmed by the monumental idea of drawing a picture. Because some of them can be like, You've got so many elements you've got to draw and so many um, things you've got to ma uh, problem solve and master. And instead just say, I'm going to put down the first blob. Obviously, this is a terrible drawing, <laughs> but it's just to give you an idea of the techniques. And what I might actually do is uh, abandon this guy and just show you how once I start to drill down into something, you can see all my smudge work here. This is a face of old Tom who's leading the expedition. And yeah, you, you just carry on. You can see he's in one layer. Get his fur lined hood here with that get rid of those hard edges around here more fur even out some of this I might want a bit of highlighting there on the side of his nose whatever that's called oh actually we'll get a bit in here for his eye now with the dodge and burn tool I recommend going nuts with it in grayscale but um being not using it as much when you're dealing with color because it does weird things to color sometimes it doesn't really make the colors look good you can get away with it i mean try using it and see the result sometimes i'll use it and sometimes i won't and that, that's when i'll use multiply and uh, color dodge layers over the top when dealing with color um This video of this guy getting made, this entire thing, will be on my episode 13 of The Adven Adventures of Winter's Edge. This is a uh, series where the guys, a D&D &D campaign I'm running set in Winter's Edge, they've actually finally headed out to the wildlands, driving these yak worms. Uh, and they've got their first very big dangerous quest they're on. So check out episode 13 if you want to see the full video and this shows me basically starting out with this guy here in the middle as a blob and just building then i actually duplicated duplicated and changed him up a bit um but yeah you'll see the entire process there and as i say dodge and burn smudge tool to move the shape cut and cut out as my eraser tool and liquefy to really play with the shape. Say if I want to give this guy a bit of a bigger nose, I'll go into liquefy, get the right size, and I might just play with this a little bit. You guys will see me doing this all the time in my process videos. Because I haven't started out with a strong sketch, 
which I occasionally do. But I'm not a huge fan of sketching because it's just such a, it's almost like its own step. That takes a lot of time. And then I get it in and I have to uh, get the grayscale over it anyway and then color it. So it's like a whole extra stage. Only good thing I like about it is you can just sit on the couch, on the couch with a pad, and draw away. Okay, so I think that will give you enough to go on. Um, find some good brushes. Get used to using the smudge tool at a hundred percent strength. Jump in, use the liquify, and just play. Um, and yeah, you can do better than this. I'm sorry I showed you this thing. It was awful, but just to show you how I use the tools. And uh, yeah, watch this guy's video here instead to see a proper technique in using the um, using the dodge, burn, liquify, and smudge tool. Hopefully that completes this art quest and it helps you guys out with just one technique. I like to try lots of different techniques just to keep it fresh, but this one is a go-to technique if I'm worried about tackling a painting and it seems big. I'll just start with a blob, start cutting and moving. Okay, thank you for watching and more to come. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.